We're going to continue our exploration of practical effects using the new particle system in Cinema 4D 2024.4 today. And I thought for this one, I'll go back to a video I made previously and do an, another medical animation. And in this case, I created this video uh, showing how to insert a stent in an artery. One of the properties of some stents that are implanted is they are drug eluding. So they emit uh, a time release sort of drug while they're implanted inside the artery to help reduce uh, the amount of like cholesterol plaque and things like that. And so I thought this would be a perfect way to show another example of how to use the new particle system and a good example of something that was really challenging to do before uh, with the old particle system. There's a link to the project files as well as the original demo that I did on YouTube. If you want to download that, you can start right where I'm starting here. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so we've got our animation set up to go. And what I want to do is um, I've tried in the past trying to, uh, to create uh, the emission coming straight from the stent that I created earlier, but it just wasn't working for me. So if I tried to do something like make a uh, spline emitter, for example, because if we look at the way this stent is being constructed, it's simply a uh, cloner object, right, that's cloning a couple of different sweep objects that have a helix inside them. So that's how this is made. And I've got an um, Expresso tag on here that's controlling a lot of the information to be animated. Check out the previous video uh, for animating a, a stent using Expresso if you're interested in learning how that was set up. So what I want to do with this one is actually just kind of duplicate this stent. And I want to, uh, so if I were to produce this animation, I think what I would do is start at frame 180. And that's how I've got it kind of set up right now, right? So the animation originally was going from 0 to 180. And the balloon comes in. Let me turn off my IPR for a moment. So I started off with this stent animation. The balloon comes in. It starts to expand. And then this section right here works a little bit. There's a little bit of lag because there's a lot going on as I'm deforming things. But after we get to 180, frame 180 here, all of the deformation has happened. And all that's going to happen from this point on is the balloon's going to shrink down and remove itself. So what I want to do for this is I think what I would do is I render out the first part of this animation up to frame uh, you know, 179. And then I would start a new render where I'm going to swap out this stent for a new one. And so I'm going to start this animation at frame 180. And what I want to do is tell this stent animated group. And again, you can download this file exactly as it is here and work with it uh, if you want to. In, the link is in the project description, or the link is in the video description. All right, so I want to take this stent animated. I'm going to right click on it and say, connect objects. And what that'll do is create a mesh version of what I had before, um, but it's sort of like connected everything together. And then I can just hide this one from visibility completely. And so now I've got this stent animated, and I'll relabel this as stent still or static. Uh, and I can go ahead and turn off all of these other things, right? So I don't need the Expresso tag in there anymore. I don't need any of these polygon selection tags or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and keep the UV tag. And so now if I do a, a preview, uh, you an IPR, you can see I've got the stent with my balloon in place. Uh, if I move through from my animation starting at frame 180, the balloon's going to start to reduce itself. And then eventually the guide wire that's holding the balloon is going to pull out. And what I want to have happen is as soon as the stent is in place, I want it to begin emitting the, the drugs that's, that are going into the tissue. And so to do that, I'm going to use not a spline emitter, but a mesh emitter. So we're going to create a basic mesh emitter, and uh, we're going to wrap that mesh, or we're, we're going to use this static stent as our mesh. So under mesh emitter, I'm going to put in, under geometry, my static stent. And right away, if I turn off my IPR and just 
play from frame 180, you'll see that it's emitting particles. So that's good. Let's slow them down a little bit. Uh, let's make them go like, I don't know, eight and see how that feels. So now it's emitting particles. Um, and I think what I want to do is have the particles start off kind of slow, but then speed up over time so that it, they begin to emit their drugs into those tissues and pretty quickly come to a static sort of speed of emitting those drugs. And so the first thing I'll do is over just about maybe a second, so from 180 to 210, uh, I'll have the emitter sort of ramp up its emission rate from maybe just like 10 to, I don't know, 5,000 or something like that. So at frame 180, I'll go ahead and make it 10. And then at frame 210, I'll make it 5,000. And so that'll give me a buildup of this drug releasing. That's too fast. I'm going to make it a lot slower. So let's do like an, let's bring it out to 240 and see how that feels. Because remember this was in place, right? And I want the drugs to start emitting over time. That's feeling a lot better. I think that's going to work. And let's, uh, let's have these have a lifetime. So they're emitting over time. Uh, so they're emitting at a rate of 10. They're going up to a rate of 5,000. And I'm going to have them have a lifetime of something like 35. So they're emitting, and it feels like they're actually going into that tissue now. I like the speed that it's coming out. I might actually slow them down a tiny bit. Let's make them come out like six. So that sort of feels like these drugs are being emitted from the uh, this metal stent that's in the artery. And now those drugs are being absorbed into the tissue, which... The idea is the drug eluding stents help to reduce, you know, further cholesterol plaques and things like that. So let us make some more modifications. So under my particle group, I'm going to say draw radius. And these are far too big right now. If I do like a IPR, you, you'll see that they're just enormous green blobs. And that's not really the look I'm going for. It looks like something's wrong instead of something's being, <laughs> instead of something being helpful. So uh, let's go ahead and change that. So under my mesh emitter, uh, I'm going to say radius uh, 0.6. And nothing has changed when I done when I did that. So anytime you change the information, um, the data is already stored in the particles after it's been created. So you have to kind of like go back and restart your play to actually see the results. So I like that size a lot better. I think that feels nicer. I'm going to change the color to more of like a cyan sort of feel. Let's go ahead and get rid of our dope sheet for a little bit so we can see a better preview. Okay, so we're getting this nice emission of these particles. Uh, and, and you can see that the radius is pretty nice, right? So I like that. One other thing I want to have these do, though, is instead of just being the same size and disappearing, I want them to shrink down over time so that they get smaller as they go. So to do that, I'm going to use a data mapper. And the data mapper should come below the mesh emitter, uh, any of the emitters. So if, if you think about the way I, I was I was watching some of the videos that were just done by Maxon recently, and um, they explained that the order of the way things are put on here is really important. So uh, the emitter needs to be come, come first because that's when the particle is born. And then you're telling that particle what to do afterwards. Otherwise, if you flip that around, you could see like a blip at the beginning um, where you like one a, a one frame blip where things are going from their default to what you're telling them to do. But if you have the particle be born first and then change it, it'll be, do exactly what you want. So what I want is I want it over the course of 35 frames, which is how long my particles are currently living. So that's their age. I want them to change size. So not position, but radius. And the way this functions is this lower part is this lower out, and the upper part is this upper out. 
So right now we've got a bell graph. So whatever number I put in here for lower is going to be how big it is when it starts, so 0.6. And whatever I number I put in here for upper is going to be up here, so 0. So right now they're going to be born at 0.6. They're going to go about halfway through their life and be 0. And then they're going to go back to being 0.6. Let's see if that's true. It is true. So I'm going to stop looking at my camera and zoom in. So you can see they're starting off big, getting small. Right, and then getting big again. So what I want to do is get rid of this and and just drag this all the way over. And now during their lifetime, they're starting at 0.6 and they're disappearing as they get bigger. And you can change this curve to suit your needs. Um, if you want to make it a little bit less linear, more uh, curve to it, you can do that. So I think this is looking pretty good. You've got the drugs are emitting. They look pretty nice. Let's stop and do an IPR just so we can see what it's looking like. Let's look through the camera. I feel like the number of particles needs to be increased kind of dramatically. So I'm going to increase these to, I'm going to increase that um, mesh emitter rate from 5,000 to 10,000. I think that's looking a lot better. I also want to change uh, some of my previews here. Um, I want to go ahead and, well, let's get rid of the dope sheet. That'll help us get a better version of our render. And let me go ahead and make some changes. In, in the previous file, I had set things up so that they would render with denoising. I'm going to disable denoising right now um, just so we can actually see what's going on. And I'm just going to turn this back to basic and do like medium for the quality and turn off bucket mode in my preview. So this is giving us a little bit better preview of what's happening. So one of the things I, I want to do is I want these to not feel like solid, ob like right now they feel like solid objects. I want them to feel like they have some color and they're like kind of bright uh, and sort of emitting a little bit of, uh, and also not casting a shadow. So let's take care of the shadow thing first. And that's pretty easy to do. All I want to do is tell the light, I think the dome light will be okay, but I'm going to tell this area light that's up here at the left top under project to exclude this particle group. And that has done it, right? So that they're no longer casting such drastic shadows. I could do it with the dome light as well if I wanted to have them completely uh, not cast shadows, but now I'm getting this um, darkness that I'm not really liking. So I'm going to go ahead and keep some some light on them. I also want them to emit light, so I need to make a material for them. Uh, let's create a new material. We'll make it a standard material. I want to feed in the particle color, so let's double click and open this up. We're going to add a new one here that's called color user data. Color user data and that color user data under this presets section I'm going to use particle color and feed that into my color I'm also going to feed that into my particle emission uh, so let's see if I can grab that so if you just drag into this empty area it gives you other properties that you can use so uh, base properties emission color. So now it's using it the color of the particle for emission as well as for the color itself. And so if I come down to the emission section under my particle and change this to two, and then put this material on my particle group, you'll see that it is exactly doing what it, what it said it was going to do. So now I can make some changes. I think that's a little too bright, maybe. So uh, my emission is going to be like 1.5, maybe just 1. And I'm just going to zoom in so we can get a better uh, view of it here. Now let's see what happens if we were to do something like ignore these in the, in the dome light. So if I my particle group out from the dome light now it's actually going to be uh, lighting up and emitting so that is an option uh, at this stage 
I don't really, I think it, I, I liked it a little better with it in there, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Uh, so I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and do a couple tests here and see. So I'm just going to play. And I'll do go ahead and do an actual uh, render preview. So let's see how that feels. I'll say current frame and don't save it. So yeah, I think that's looking pretty nice. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and say that we are liking this and uh, use that as our example. I think I want to speed them up maybe just a tiny bit. Maybe I'll go to seven. I just wanted them to come out in this tissue a little bit more. And last thing I'm going to do is just kind of set up my render settings again uh, so that they can... I'll do some tests here with my IPR, turn my bucket mode back on, and see if I can get this looking the way I want it to. I'm going to try point 0.15 here. Go ahead and turn denoising back on. I think this is going to work for me. Um, it's not not too bad. I'm going to give this a try. It'll be a much faster render. Great. So I'm just going to go ahead and render both of these. I'm going to render this section out and I'm going to mash it up with the one I did previously and we'll see how it looks. So here, here you can see the final product. We've got our previous animation from the from another YouTube video I did on creating a stent and then our new video uh, tagged onto that showing the drug eluding portion using the new particle system in Cinema 4D. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. This was a quick one, uh, but I thought it would be nice just to kind of use some previous examples and show how I could have taken it further uh, if I actually had this tool when I did that first video. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you've liked the video, if it's been helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.